Hey everyone, this is my review or overview of the Dawes Roundhouse 2500 bike that I got off of uh, bikesdirect.com. Uh, middle, middle of the range bike, uh, $499. For those of you that are interested in like the Specialized or the Giants, the two, three, four thousand dollar $4,000 bikes, this one really doesn't compare. Um, but it's a good starter bike and I, I, I got it and I'm pretty happy with it. I've got four or five hundred miles on this bike and so far I'm pretty happy. I've done some light upgrades to it. Um, got rid of some of the crummy components that come on it. All the components that do come on it are brand name components just kind of bottom of the line of those brand name components so I'm just going to go through and talk about everything that's on the bike. Um, I wish this was out there when I bought the bike but it wasn't. I kind of took what I felt was taking a chance on the bike, but I'm pretty happy I did. So hopefully this will help you guys make a decision. Um, uh, the rims of the WTB uh, aluminum disc rims. It also has the uh, WTB Velociraptor tires, which are pretty soft, which work. They're pretty grippy in the dirt, but I've noticed that they've worn out four or five hundred miles on it, and they've. Uh, they're pretty, fairly worn out already from me. I do like half road, half uh, mountain, so um, they work good. This bike's 33 pounds, so it's a little on the heavy side. Um, but I think uh, my next tires I get will probably be some uh, dual compound tires. Uh, in the back, it's got 160 millimeter uh, Tektro disc brakes, uh, the, the cable brakes, a little over 200 pounds, and they stop me pretty well. Um, I may upgrade those to some hydraulics at some point. Uh, all aluminum frame, still 33 pounds. I think I got it down to about 31 pounds now. Um, first thing I changed was the, uh, the shock. It, it comes with a, a KS coilover shock, which is really stiff. And me being over 200 pounds, it, it still didn't feel like it had much of a suspension in the rear. Um, it's because it's got an 850 pound spring and I got it pretty much as loose as it'll get. The nice thing about this shock though is it does have a lockout. So when you're uh, on the road or pump, pumping up a, a hill you can lock it out and basically makes it like a rigid bike. So uh, that was the nice feature on it and it only really felt like I had a shock over the real big bumps. So I changed to the uh, Manitou uh, air shock which also has a lockout, so I got the uh, best of both worlds. So it's pretty cushy over the big bumps and stuff. Fully adjustable with lockout. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this thing will accommodate. This is six and a half eye to eye. This will accommodate about a seven and a half eye to eye. It'll change the uh, suspension geometry a little bit, but I don't think it'll affect it that much. But it'll give you more travel, which I wish I had. I wish I got a, a little bit bigger shock, and maybe someday I will. So down to the three-piece crank. Um, pretty decent, pretty beefy. Uh, I don't know why you would upgrade that. Uh, the other thing I upgraded was the pedals. The pedals that come on it are total junk. I think they're called bear traps. Total junk. Uh, got rid of those and I got some other, they're fairly cheap pedals but they do come with a re replaceable pin so if you drag it on the ground or they start wearing out you can undo the screw in the back and replace the pins. But it's much wider and bigger platform to stand on so um, moving up to the uh, front suspension it's got the uh, rock shock start 2 which has got the preload adjustment um, also front front discs uh, same rims and front tire they're uh, from bikesdirect.com they put the back tire on backwards and you can tell just because the labels on the other side but you could tell when you get your bike you might have to flip your tire um, also the the disc brakes were way out of adjustment they're rubbing on one side one of the pads is rubbing so you just undo the two bolts slide your caliper over a little bit center it and now now it spins pretty free without touching the uh, the disc at all so um, going around up to the handlebars that was the other thing I replaced to uh, take some of the weight off. It's pretty clunky, pretty generic uh, stem and handlebar. Plus they're fairly narrow for me. I'm a big guy so um, I, I got the uh, race face uh, handlebar and stem which uh, I'm pretty happy with. I also got the race face uh, clamp on 
uh, grips. They come with a WTB grip, which is a pretty decent grip, but I figured since I had to pull them off, might as well upgrade and get a little bit nicer uh, grip. So I got the race face. Um, the, the shifters are all Shimano rapid fire. Uh, Olivio, I don't know. Uh, pretty decent, not super accurate. I know they make better ones out there, um, but they get the job done. Uh, and then the Tektro uh, brake levers, all aluminum. Uh, the RockShox uh, Dart 2 has the uh, front lockout, which is nice because you can make the fork rigid in the front. And then it has the uh, preload dampening. It also has the uh, the the rebound dampening down here is just a, a dial. I have mine a little towards the slow side. Uh, I found a little on the slow side makes it pretty uh, pretty nice, pretty cushy ride over the bumps. And then uh, on the road, uh, I lock out my shock. So I'm basically riding a rigid bike on the road. And then when I get to the mountain portion of my rides, I'll, f I'll flip on my suspension. And that's pretty cush. So down back to the three-piece cranks and the... Uh, the three sprocket front gear. Uh, the front Dior derailleur uh, was way out of adjustment, but they send you links on Bike Direct, uh, YouTube links that show you how to adjust the front and the rear derailleur. And with that, it took me probably about an hour to flip my tire, set up the set up the derailleurs, and also adjust my uh, calipers. And this bike's been a dream ever since. So um, it's got the Shimano rear derailleur. Works pretty decent, a little sloppy. Uh, sometimes it catches in between the two sprockets and they'll jump to the other, which makes kind of a, a sloppy shop, sloppy gear changes. So um, Decent tires, pretty soft compound, so I, they're wearing out pretty fast on the road. And the last thing is the uh, seat that I didn't think I'd like, but after a week or so, after uh, I kind of got used to it, it's actually a really, really comfortable seat. Um, I don't know, it's probably just vinyl. Uh, but it feels pretty soft. It's got a little bit of cush. It's got the uh, the love channel in it, channel in it for uh, comfort, and uh, you get it adjusted right. And it's actually a really comfortable seat. Uh, I think I've covered everything. If you guys got any questions, go ahead and go ahead and post them under your comments. And as I look, you know, over the next couple weeks, I'll try and answer them. But if you're thinking about buying this bike, go for it. It's a great beginner bike. I'm super happy with it. So take care.